Happy Earth Day, everyone. Um, today, I wanted to talk about Earth Day and how it intersects with organizing and productivity and money mindset. And um, I was just thinking back about all my Earth Day experiences. And um, it's kind of amazing. I actually did a thing for the first Earth Day back in 1970. My little kindergarten class did some stuff about the earth for earth day and the environment and lit picked up litter and stuff like that and then 25 years later i was in san francisco on the presidio for the 25th anniversary celebration and that's when i realized that's when i started practicing things more in earnest like i was always concerned with litter and water and making a stepping lightly on the earth, if you will, but I didn't really think about the bigger how to make an impact things. Um, and I, all of a sudden, out of the blue, started developing a chemical sensitivity to some things. And so at that Earth Day, uh, the 25th anniversary, back in 1994, 94, 95, um, I was looking for information on chemicals and their impact on the earth. And so I started making my own cleaners at that point, or not really so much making my own cleaners, but going back to old original cleaners that weren't as chemically impactful, shall we say. Um, so I went from using things like 409 and Fantastic to going back and using vinegar and water or just soap and vinegar and baking soda or borax to clean most things in my house. Um, and that's continued, although um, over the last 30 years, there's been a lot of greenwashing or people jumping on the back bandwagon saying that things they offer are environmentally friendly. And often that's not quite the case. Um, even people or companies with great intentions don't always recognize the impact their alternatives have in a different way on the environment. So it's not only about chemicals. You got to look at distribution of things, how things are manufactured. It's great if you want to manufacture something that doesn't have as much plastic, but if it involves shipping things back and forth between countries or across the country to have different kinds of parts assembled, you might be making a bigger carbon impact with the transportation impact. So think of it. There's a lot of different things and many are kind of localized. I live here in the Southwest. We are always very water conscious and water sensitive. And so some things that don't have as many chemicals or maybe don't have any plastic on them require more water to take care of. You have to, um, wash things differently or um, use more water to dissolve it or elbow grease um, along with hot water to make it work. And so sometimes something as simple as a plastic container that lasts much longer and doesn't can be easily wiped off without running it through a dishwasher or in the sink might actually be a slightly better option if it doesn't use as much water or you know many cleaning things like um let's say the pink stuff that's all the rage on tiktok these days it requires rinsing with a lot of um water and so it may not be the best choice for me right anything that requires a little extra rinsing might not solve my problem um so that's one thing um another example is plastic bags yeah we don't get them from the grocery store anymore in a lot of locations but what do you use instead do you remember your other bags how many trips to the store have your bags made your replacement bags those reusable bags do you have 87 of them or do you just have three or four what where is the limit you're going to put on the other materials it's not about accumulating more in a different material it's about using less overall so for me, I live alone. I rarely have more than one grocery store size bag of trash in my kitchen garbage every week. But if I use just tall kitchen bags, I would 
be having a stinky kitchen because I only make about a third, if that, of a tall kitchen bag each week. And it starts smelling before the bag is full. But if I use those grocery bags to line my trash can, I don't worry about it. And I don't have to buy an extra um, box of bags, right, to take out my trash in. So there's all kinds of considerations. So what I would love for you to do this Earth Day is instead of insisting on a certain material, think through how often you need to replace the thing you're purchasing. Is it something that will last 25 years or is it something that's going to last a year? And buy the thing that's going to last longer and only if you need it in the first place. Is there something else already ex in existence in your house or your office that will get the job done? You don't need extras. You need the things that work for you to do the things you need to do. And there's no need to buy more than that. Packaging. Always opt for the less amount of packaging. Least amount of packaging. Um... And that includes if you have to take a container to buy it, is it worth buying, right? Ha! What if a thing of popcorn kernels that you pop yourself actually is less overall packaging than buying microwave popcorn or pre-popped popcorn? Huh? What about that? Didn't think I'd go there, did you? Popcorn. <laughs> Um, but I can buy a jar of popcorn that lasts for months versus buying much packaging around the alternative versions of things. Um, and then the third thing that you can really do to have an impact on the earth, in addition to not buying what you don't need and limiting the amount of packaging, is to get in touch with what is impacting your local area? Find out what your solid waste department does with um, recycling. If it's worth recycling or if it's worth spending more time with policymakers, calling the companies of the products you love and telling them, giving them feedback about their packaging and how much extra it is. Do you need something wrapped in plastic, wrapped in plastic, wrapped in plastic? Do you need something in a box that is comes in a jar? Do you need something that comes in a box around a jar that's plastic or glass? Do you need something that dissolves without anything extra and that it actually dissolves? What do you need? Give the companies that make the things the feedback. And then talk to your policymakers. Talk to your local politicians. Talk to your national politicians. We've got to get to the point where there is less packaging is the number one impact consumers can make on the environment. So think about that on this lovely Earth Day. And if you would like some recipes for my homemade cleaners, by all means, leave me a message in the comments and I will um, check in on those and send you a couple recipes uh, in the coming days. Anyway, don't forget to like, follow, share, tell all your friends. And in the meantime, have a delightful day.